I am Bill Rochelle, Editor-at-Large for American Bankruptcy Institute. This week on Rochelle's Daily Wire, the video edition, I thought we would reflect on some of the contributions that the Puerto Rico debt restructuring is making for important issues of federal law generally. As you know, back in May of 2017, Puerto Rico went into a proceeding under a federal law called PROMISA, which pretty much adopts municipal bankruptcy for an entity like Puerto Rico, a commonwealth, which is not eligible for ordinary Chapter 9 bankruptcy in the United States. By the time this video comes out, the Supreme Court very well may have decided a Puerto Rico case that was argued before the High Court in the middle of October. That case deals with whether or not Puerto Rico's Oversight Board was unconstitutionally appointed because the members were not nominated by the President and confirmed by the U.S. Senate. This decision is important in federal law because it's going to give the Supreme Court an opportunity to try to give some coherence to the constitutional notion of who is a principal officer that must be nominated by the president and confirmed by the Senate, because the way I read the law, it's pretty much catch as catch can without a lot of underlying coherence. There was a brand new decision on the 15th of April by District Judge Laura Taylor Swain who sits by designation in the Puerto Rico District Court overseeing Puerto Rico's debt arrangement proceedings. She dealt with a case where the Oversight Board for Puerto Rico had invalidated a number of laws passed by the uh, Puerto Rico legislature which were not approved uh, in accordance with the fiscal plan that the Oversight Board had approved. In other words, uh, Judge Taylor said that the Oversight Board had the power to invalidate these laws that were otherwise validly enacted by Puerto Rico's elected legislature. Interestingly, Judge Swain said in her decision that she was employing so-called Chevron deference to determine whether or not the actions by the Puerto Rico Board were proper or not. Chevron was that case in the United States Supreme Court several years back, which said that when a statute is clear about the intent of Congress, a reviewing court can uh, look at a uh, ruling by an agency without giving any deference to the agency at all. But on the other hand, if the intent of uh, Congress is not clear, then the reviewing court is required to give a substantial degree of deference to the agency. So what I find interesting is this. What we had was a board, which I guess is uh, much like an agency, invalidating a law of a territory of the United States. Well, let's think by analogy. This is somewhat like a federal court saying that a state law is preempted by federal law. Under those situations, typically, the review does not give any deference to what the lower court says. Or likewise, if a state law is found to be unconstitutional, typically also in those circumstances, there is no deference given to whoever made the original decision. So I find this kind of, uh, shall we say, curious that the uh, oversight board is going to be able to make rulings such as these, invalidating the laws of a commonwealth uh, by giving deference to the rulings of that oversight board. But I guess at bottom, what we have to recognize is that Puerto Rico is not a state. So in that sense, analogies to a court's overturning a determination by a state legislature is not the same when we're dealing with a territory or a commonwealth because in those situations, I think federal law is much more powerful. I am Bill Rochelle. I will be back same time next week with something interesting that has occurred in the world of bankruptcy. 
Till then, be well, stay home, take care of your family, and we'll see you next week. Good day.